Hello friends, welcome to Dudier Academy. In this video, I have included the important multiple choice questions on topic central nervous system with explanation and it will be useful for you for different competitive examinations like AIMS, GIPMER, ESI, state PSCs and all for the staff nurse and nursing officer exams. So let me start. First question. Temperature regulatory center of body is temperature regulatory center of body is options hypothalamus, medulla oblongata, cerebellum, thalamus. The right answer is hypothalamus. So hypothalamus is concerned with the regulation of body temperature. Then medulla oblongata concerned with the reflex control of respiration, then heartbeat and all. Then the cerebellum is concerned with the coordination of skeletal muscles movement and e equilibrium okay cerebellum is related with the, uh, the coordination of skeletal muscles equilibrium and movement then thalamus is considered as the relay center for sensory impulses the relay center for sensory impulses is thalamus so here the question was temperature regulatory center and the answer is hypothalamus now second question Stimulation of vagus nerve result in stimulation of vagus nerve result in options tachycardia, slowing of the heart, dilation of the bronchioles, coronary artery, vasodilation. The right answer is slowing of the heart. So vagus nerve is the cranial nerve 10, ten, 10th cranial nerve, and stimulation of vagus nerve result in myocardial contractility and vasodilation causing bradycardia and hypotension okay bradycardia so the answer is slowing of heart rate in this question and hypotension okay then question number three inability to interpret or recognize object is inability to interpret or recognize object is options ataxia aphasia apraxia agnosia the right answer is agnosia. So what is ataxia? Ataxia is the lack of voluntary coordination of muscle movements, uh, speech changes and abnormalities in eye movement. Okay, it is the lack of voluntary coordination of the muscle movements. So it is concerned with the gait abnormalities, speech changes and abnormalities in the eye movement. Aphasia means that it is a language disorder that affects the person's ability to communicate. So it is a language problem. Aphasia. Apraxia is inability to correctly perform the learned skilled movements even though the patient has normal sensation and is strong and coordinated. That is it is the inability to uh, do the previously learned activities that is known as apraxia. Then agnosia means inability to identify familiar objects. So our question was inability to recognize the objects, uh, familiar objects. So the answer is agnosia. Next question. Normal range of intracranial pressure is 0 to 5 millimeters of mercury, 5 to 10 millimeters of mercury, 5 to 15 millimeters of mercury, 15 to 20 millimeters of mercury. The right answer is 5 to 15 millimeters of mercury. So normal ICP is 5 to 15 millimeters of mercury. Sustained pressure greater than 15 millimeters of mercury indicates increased intracranial pressure. Okay, if it is greater than 15 millimeters of mercury, that shows increased ICP. And the recommended threshold for treatment is 20 millimeters of mercury. Okay. Next question. Question number 5. The most common CNS neoplasm in HIV infected patients is the most common CNS neoplasm in HIV infected patients is options glioblastoma, meningioma, lymphoma, meningeal sarcoma. Okay, glioblastoma, meningioma, lymphoma, meningeal sarcoma. The right answer is lymphoma. The common CNS neoplasm in HIV infected patients is lymphoma. So 
the in hiv infected patients the most common cns disorders found are lymphoma toxoplasmosis and progressive multifocal leukoencephalopathy these are the most common cns disorders found in hiv infected patients so in that if you are asked most common neoplasm the answer is lymphoma mainly non hodgkin's lymphoma and most common cns infection is the question if the question is most common cns infection in hiv infected patients answer is toxoplasmosis okay so the question here was the most common neoplasm the answer is lymphoma next question number 6 involuntary movements and parkinsonism develop with damage in involuntary movements and parkinsonism develop with damage in options basal ganglia cerebellum cerebrum pons the right answer is basal ganglia involuntary movements and parkinsonism develop with damage in basal ganglia so if we go in detail for basal ganglia is associated with the movement disorders like parkinsonism atherosclerosis chorea and cerebral hemisphere uh, is concerned with the problems like hemiparesis with hyperactive deep tendon reflexes hemisensory loss partial seizures aphasia dementia and all any problems in associated with the he cerebral hemispheres may cause uh, hemiparesis uh, then seizures partial seizures aphasia dementia and all then brain stem injury to the brain stem is associated with the cranial nerve palsy and nystagmus cerebellum uh, it is concerned with ataxic gait impaired rapid alternating movements any injury or any problems to the cerebellum is affecting these problems like ataxic gait impaired rapid alternating movements then uh, para paresis or quadriparesis then spasticity bladder bubble and sexual dis dysfunctions all these are associated with injury to spinal cord okay the problems like paraparesis or quadriparesis spasticity bladder bubble and sexual dysfunctions all these are related with injury to the spinal cord so the question here was the uh, problems like parkinsonism so the answer is basal ganglia next question number 7 broca's area is located in which area of the cortex options frontal parietal occipital temporal the right answer is frontal broca's area is located in frontal lobe so there are two language areas of brain one is broca's area and second is wernicke's area so broca's area is concerned with speaking that is production of words and it is located in the left frontal hemisphere or frontal lobe okay so the question was Uh, broca's area is located in frontal lobe okay and wernicke's area is associated with understanding of language or comprehension of words so it is responsible for receptive speech broca's area is concerned with the production of words and any problem to broca's area is may causing broca's aphasia or expressive aphasia here the wernicke's area is responsible for receptive speech and it is located in temporal lobe Okay, Wernicke's area is located in temporal lobe, and Broca's area is located in frontal lobe. Question number eight: A bruise over the mastoid process in skull fracture is options: Spalding sign, Battle sign, Homan sign, Cullen sign. So the question is: A bruise over the mastoid process in skull fracture is answer is Battle sign. okay then spalding sign is the overlapping of fetal skull bones which is caused to by collapse of fetal brain okay it is the overlapping of the fetal skull bones that is spalding sign homan sign is the pain in the calf of leg upon dorsiflexion of foot with the legs extended so pain in the calf muscles first uh, during dorsiflexion of the foot with leg extended and it is diagnostic of thrombosis in the deep vein deep veins of that area 
Then Cullen sign is the hemorrhagic discoloration of umbilical area due to intraperitoneal hemorrhage. And um, one of the most co uh, common cause is acute pancreatitis for Cullen sign. So here the uh, answer is Rho is over the mastoid process in skull fracture is battle sign. Then question number 9. In Glasgow comma scale, the verbal response of inappropriate words are given a score of. In Glasgow comma scale, the verbal response of inappropriate words are given a score of options 1, 2, 3, 4. So the right answer is 3, given the score of 3. So there are three components in Glasgow comma scale that is best eye response, best verbal response and best motor response. These are the three components in the Glasgow comma scale and in best verbal response there are five components oriented, the, if the person is oriented the score is 5, if the person is confused score is 4, if the person is making inappropriate words the score is 3 so the question was inappropriate words so the answer is 3 and incom incomprehensible sound the score is 2 and no verbal response the score is 1 so best verbal response com consists of mainly 5 components oriented confused inappropriate words incomprehensible sound and no verbal response okay then question number 10 which of the following diagnostic investigation is useful to detect seizure which of the following diagnostic investigation is useful to detect seizure options ct scan eeg mri scan x-ray the right answer is eeg so eeg or electroencephalography detects the electrical activity of the brain through electrodes attached to the scalp and it helps to diagnose epilepsy which, which may cause obvious abnormalities in the EEG readings okay so EEG helps in diagnosing seizures or epilepsy so thank you thank you for watching the video Tell me that you love me, even if it's fake